Do tragic events like this kind of make Asian Americans view America differently? Yeah, this is going viral right now. Obviously, this is not even the most tragic case of an Asian being shot, but uh, you know, we're gonna talk about this one because it had a good ending. Winnie Go, Andrew, was a uh, entrepreneur from SoCal just driving up to SF to sell some of her projects. Uh, uh, and she's on Genevieve Street, South San Francisco, and uh, got caught in the crossfire between two cars. I'm assuming some sort of gang shootout and uh, got shot in the leg. The bullet fragmented in her leg, but she didn't die. She's gonna make a full recovery and she has a viral post on Instagram talking about it. Yeah, um, and you know, like we obviously keep up with the Asian news very closely. We might not talk about every single story and every single tragedy because honestly, sometimes it's sad, man, and there's not that much to say, you know, but I'll mention it now because I, I know see people had asked us, like obviously Jasper Wu, that was a big case. Ina Kwan just happened in Seattle not too long ago. Gamey Paul happened in uh, Kentucky recently, and those are all tragic for different reasons. Some of them were intentional. Some of them were not as intentional. So I guess not all these cases are the same, but one common thread is that obviously there was an Asian victim in, in all of them. But I guess we're going to go into the comment section of Winnie Goh's post because uh, there is a discussion going on. Um, and I guess I had, some, I had some questions. Is it like, do you feel like it's fear-mongering to pay attention to the Asian news sources that cover all the negative Asian news. So it feels like that this stuff is happening a lot to Asians, while maybe it's not necessarily happening more frequently, but we're just seeing everything. Um, I think people have a right to be informed. Yeah. I do think that news that's written a certain way, or it doesn't like always, I guess, if you want, give you like, 10 other statistics and contextualize it with like this expert and this competing expert. I don't think people can write like these detailed PhD theses every time they drop a piece of news either, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just like this happened. Yeah. Um, and I, I do think like overall, I guess, uh, as long as these news sources like Next Shark kind of cover all the stories, then it's going to be fair. Right. So a lot of people tend to think Next Shark's like, oh, Next Shark is too liberal. Oh, Next Shark is too right wing. And like, well, I guess they're doing a good job of being in the middle if both sides think that they're too one way. But anyways, yeah. guys, uh, yeah, we'll get into the comment section and see what we can take away uh, from this conversation. Make, yeah, make sure you like this video. Um, I'm sure a lot of people who are like watching this video, you guys have seen an Asian news source, whether it's on Instagram or TikTok or any other yeah. channel. Um, it, it does feel like that Asians, obviously, Andrew, in terms of uh, dishing out violence, which is a very American thing, let's just be honest at this point, dishing out violence or receiving violence, it does seem like overwhelmingly Asians are on the receiving end. Oh, statistically speaking, and I don't know the numbers, but this is definitely a stat you guys can look it up and a lot of people know that Asians are definitely more likely to get attacked by someone non-Asian than another Asian because Asians... But when Asians do attack someone, usually it's another Asian. Right. Well, I believe Asians are the only group that is less likely to be attacked by their own group, somebody from their ethnic group yeah. than outside. And especially Asian women. Asian women are, are more likely to get attacked by non non Asian person. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, guys. So, I mean, hey, these are just real stats, guys. Duh. I think honestly, it's like weird because some people, Andrew, they don't they don't like to hear that. But everybody, dude, yeah. if you're Asian and well, American, you it's know, because there's no. We don't have the solution, man. We're just talking about it. Hopefully you learn some. Anyways, let's, let's get into the comment section. Somebody said, people are talking about politics and gun laws. Even if Winnie Go had a gun on her, it was a drive-by shooting and she was in her car. She got caught in the crossfire. The bullet went through her door and hit her leg. Do you think that she's literally going to shoot back like this is some sort of John Wick movie? Everybody's talking about Rambo in the comments. They're all acting tough. They weren't there in that situation. So basically, this is, uh, I guess, regarding what, like the male inclination to just like chime in and be like, man, if that happened to me, I'm doing gun food. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think situations are all different. Obviously, uh, that's not someone who's like getting into altercation with Winnie Go. She's literally a bystander in all this. So, and, and uh, she got hit. So I think like, I do think there's just a lot of tough gun talk on the internet. I'm not saying that these guys commenting don't know how to use their guns and that they don't get, get them legally and they're not out in whatever state and they're practicing constantly, but it is a lot of like, well, I would have done this or why didn't she do this? Well, if she had a gun, if a good guy had a gun there, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I guess it, it, that's, that's a lot of the comments usually on stuff. Yeah, I always thought it was crazy the idea of like giving like a school teacher like old Miss Frizzle from like the magic school bus. Yeah. She's gonna have a burner. I mean, listen, that's I crazy. Think the tr truth is that you have to be pretty well trained to use a gun well. So I think is it realistic that you're gonna train everybody? That's what everybody's gonna spend their time doing. 
Yeah, somebody said it's a miracle that she survived and didn't get shot anywhere worse. Obviously, you know, there have been a lot of tragic incidents uh, the other way. RIP to everybody. Somebody said, uh, yeah, she's lucky because getting shot in the leg is one of the worst places to get shot because there's a lot of major arteries. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I think this is true. But isn't it just funny, Andrew? Only in America do people have long, lengthy debates about shot placement and where to get hit, right? Right, right. Because I guess it's, like, uh, quite common. Um, Andrew, we're getting into the political section. Anything, it's crazy, like, it just gets politicized, right, no, by no, either if side. It, if, it, if an Asian person gets shot in the leg, it now becomes a political debate between the left and the right. Yeah, and, and the debate is going to shift depending on whether they got shot in Texas or California, right? Because those are governed by different yeah, political parties. Yeah, because if parties. it happens in Cal Texas, they're going to be like, well, see, look, now clearly your laws aren't working. And it happens in California. Well, look at these liberal policies. Oh, uh, soft letting, on crime, right? They're letting criminals out and all this stuff. Um, yeah, I and, mean, and I, honestly, there's probably valid arguments on both sides, guys, right? It's, isn't it very situational yeah. and almost like this situation validates this side and that other sal uh, situation validates another side? Yeah. Somebody said, yeah, how are those common sense gun laws working in those liberal utopian cities, huh? Mm -hmm. And then somebody said, oh, this guy's the incel, incel alert, incel alert. Somebody else, of course, kind of came in more moderately and said, you know, the problem is 100% of lifetime criminals do not care about the law fundamentally, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what laws are on the books, but I will will admit that tougher gun laws might stop teenage school shooters in a state. Mm. So Andrew, what does this show? The what the what what just the situationalness of gun laws? Because I guess if a state has really strict gun laws, it might stop a teenager who doesn't know a lot uh, from getting one at a, a gun show or whatever uh -huh. easily off their uncle, but then it wouldn't ha change necessarily two rival uh, gangs shooting at each other on the on the highway. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, organized crime, people involved in that, they'll always find a way to get a weapon. And uh, those, usually if you probably, I don't know the statistic on this one, but I would guess that if you obtain a gun illegally, you are probably more likely to be involved in gun violence. But I will say this about gun violence, David. I was looking into it, and that term... Gun violence statistics is a very broad statistic. It involves people who are committing suicide by gun, right? And then not shooting other people but themselves. And then there's also, it also includes, uh, you know, intentional and unintentional yeah. gun violence. If you accidentally shoot a friend, you know, that counts as gun violence. You know, like, so like there's, it's a really big. It's actually super nuanced. Yeah. It's super nuanced. And it like, it almost like, I don't know, guys. Anyway, moving on to the next comment. Somebody said, violent crime is flat or down in SF from pre-pandemic levels. And SF is one of the least likely big cities to be killed in. But Next Shark is too dedicated to pushing right wing Copaganda to tell you that. Um, this is an interesting no, comment, Andrew, I, because uh, a lot of people accuse right wing of being uh, Nick Shark of being too left. Boba Libs and the other people are like, you're supporting the right wing. I know that there's a movement in SF right now to be like, hey guys, actually SF's not as bad as you think it is. And it might, that might be true. I'm not saying, because I'm, I'm not in SF, so I'm not going to stand out here and say, yeah, bad SF. But I, what I will say this is that there's obviously a lot of car, like, car break-ins that you see online. So everything you see online is going to confirm that SF is bad. Now, maybe SF gets a lot of coverage, but for a city of that size, it seems like more bad things are happening to Asians or random people than in, I don't know, I would almost say New York, it almost feels like. You know what I mean? Uh, they, yeah, I mean, they both clearly have had very bad Yeah, I mean, New York is a gigantic city, though, so I guess I would expect more things to happen. And, you know, it's so complicated. We're talking about the rate. Who is being targeted? If overall gang on gang violence is like way down, that's gonna drop the overall macro numbers. But if like gang on innocent person or two bit criminal or um, you know, let's just say a crackhead on regular person is up, but gang on gang violence is super way down, that's actually still gonna reflect in a macro drop. Yeah, and maybe we're seeing an increased rate of Asian victims, but the overall crime rate is going down or staying the same. Right, somebody's like, yep, well, less white people are getting attacked, yeah. so it's okay to me. I'm just kidding, guys. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like, maybe Asians are getting attacked more often. Yeah, right? honestly, I do think so. And, you know, we're going to get into that later. I do think that Asians... Sometimes we, 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 we more live life within our community and our families, mm. and we're not even tapped into these narratives about, like, is California fallen or is Texas the new, uh, uh, you know, go-to well, land? Saying, I don't think that we're tapped into that discussion as much as other groups of Americans are. You are you saying that maybe if you uh, are tapped into more of those conversations, you might 
I guess, constantly avoid certain things that might put you at risk. Dude, I, I mean, just give you an anecdotal evidence. Andrew, me and you, we used to ride on Rainier Ave all the time in Seattle, and I still do. But, like, a lot of, like, white people in the town that we came from, especially, like, the richer ones, they would never go to Rainier. Like, Rainier Ave is, like, more, like, well, it's considered the hood. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, because it, it, it drops right at the end of Rainier is Chinatown. Obviously, to be honest, like, the white people where we grew up, they, they had no reason to go to Chinatown. They have no reason to take Rainier. Uh -huh. And it is true that Rainier, if you break it down on a statistical averages, like, I saw a SWAT team on Rainier. I saw, like, all types of wild stuff happen on right, Rainier. Right, right. Like, even just on the street, uh, regardless. But, like, it, it didn't happen every time either. Mm -hmm. You know, we just talk about statistics. It's very hard to, to understand unless you guys have lived a life. Um... Somebody said, man, the Democrats are, have turned a thriving city into a nightmare lenient on homelessness, drugs, and violent crime. And someone said, but Mayor Breed and P Police Chief Scott swear streets are safe. Who do we believe? Woke is a dangerous and failed ideology. Uh, they defunded the police, and now the police can't control everything, and everybody's shooting each other. Man. Um, how true or false is this? To be honest, I'm going to say it's at least a little true, but maybe not probably completely yeah, true. Yeah, I know that people want to simplify things and always just blame one side or the other. And it's like, man, I mean, is it the economy? Is it job opportunities? Is it criminals getting out? Is it, yeah, not prosecuting them? Is it gun laws? Is it this? Is it the health it gives? Is it like broken families? Is it immigration? Is it all these things? I don't know. Yeah. And then like, let's say for example, Housing. Andrew, a school shooting happens in Texas. People are going to use that to verify their case 10 out of 10. But then when there's somebody who randomly is just like a, a person trying to live their life, a law abiding citizen randomly gets, get, gets killed in a gang shootout in California, that's going to verify the other side's case. Yeah. But they both got dirt on each other. No, for sure. I mean, you could look at some of those uh, Uvalde and how the police had a bunch of guns and they didn't act in the way that they should have. And then you know, a bunch of kids lost their lives. I mean, that was in Texas where everybody has guns apparently. So I don't, it's nothing, dude. I don't think it's that easy to sum up, man. There's too much evidence going the other way, guys. Right, right. There's way too much nuance. It's situational and it's like this, but then this, uh, also that exception, blah, blah, blah. Um, somebody said, this is the reality for people, poor people every day in the hood, but nobody else cares until this happens. I think it's because honestly, in the hood, you kind of are on guard and you imagine that this type of thing happens. But when that starts to seep in and spread into other parts that are not hood, then you're like surprised, right? It's almost like if you have right, like like if the for the Jasper Wu case, R.I.P. If it was just two people shooting each other in Oakland rather than on the highway that everybody uses, right? Like there's thousands of thousands of people who used that highway that day or even that hour, and it just happened to be, you know, super unlucky. You know? Right, right, right. You're bringing something that used to stay on your block yeah. to, to people who don't live in that area, yeah. right? Um, Andrew, this is a commentary from Asians who live outside Asia to your original comment. Is this changing Asians' perception of America? Someone said, Jesus Christ, is this just an everyday occurrence for people in the U.S.? And someone says, why does anybody want to live in America anymore? What an ish hole place. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think, man, if you're in Canada, Australia, these are very comparable countries to America, by the way. And, at, and in most ways, you just think you're in America, especially in Canada, right? But, uh, man, where this type of stuff does it happens even less, I could see them being like, you know, oh, yeah, what's going on? Like, what's, how does the Canadian speak? Or like right, Australian right. be like, oh, crikey, this, this looks crazy in America. Right, know? yeah. No, I mean, the truth is, does it happen every day? I'll tell you this. If I hear about it every day, it doesn't shock me. Does it always happen to somebody I personally know every day? No, absolutely not. Yeah. David, do you think America could learn something from Canada and Australia? These are not considered like oppressive authoritarian regimes. They feel like free countries when you're there. Right. But they then, still got some Asian enclaves. You yeah. can live there, right? And they have comedy. They got white people, black people, good sports. What? Why? Why in America? Um, I mean, we don't have the answer, but I'm just saying this is something to ponder is what I'm saying. Dude, what can just, we learn from Canada and Australia? You let me know in the comments down below. For sure. I mean, listen, I think every system is a little bit different. And when every system is a little bit different, it ends up with a system that can look the same on the outside, but is fundamentally at its core very mm -hmm. different. Um, somebody says, I can't believe this girl used a shooting to market her small biz. I mean, listen, guys, if Winnie Go 
takes a nine millimeter in her ankle and she got to deal with all the fragments, you know, spreading everywhere. Let her promote her dog toy business. That's what rappers do. Rappers get shot and it helps their career. Usually if it doesn't end their career. Somebody said, why do Asians want to, are so obsessed with moving to California and living in this crazy bullet ridden state? Uh, obviously, this comment was from a white person who probably moved depends, out to Arizona. You know, I mean, or something. I have family who lives in California. They still like it, but yeah, they might be avoiding certain areas uh, more often now. But I mean, plenty of people, dude. Everybody loves California. Like any type of person, whether you're evil, you're good, you're a Christian, non-Christian, you're a gang, you're a, a gangster or not gangster, you're a tech person, whatever, a, a college professor. Everybody wants to go to California. California. Yeah. If you're a homeless person, of course you love California. Um. Do you do you think it just ultimately comes down to street smarts because of America? increasingly, and maybe you could argue that it's always been unbeknownst to other people, but now everybody's sort of let in on the secret, is a uh, America is a country of amazing highs, Andrew. All the companies are still here. The economy's still dynamic. But it's a place of uh, unbelievable lows. Definitely. And uh, Canada might ha- not, not have the economic highs. It might not be as dynamic. It's much harder to get rich in Canada. But they don't have the same lows either. And is this just an equation that more people, Asians have to be aware of and, and understand the pros and the cons and how to mitigate the cons and, and get more exposure to the pros as much as they can. Yeah, I do think a lot more people are looking at America. Um, I think at a time people used to look at America as like the perfect place. I got to be there. I got to be there. And then I think they're looking at America like I want to be there, but how do I do it in a way where I'm not going to get involved in this crazy stuff, you know? Um, and maybe that's the news. Maybe it's fear mongering and maybe as a true blood American, you might be like, well, don't come to my country anyways right. if you don't really want to be here. And that's, you know, that's fair from your perspective to say. But Yeah, how much is it true? I mean, Andrew, uh, comedian Tim Dillon had a very famous quote saying that America has turned into a third world country with a Gucci belt on. Um, I would also compare it possibly to a Range Rover. Andrew, everybody's like, oh man, you got a Range Rover? That's tight. But everybody knows the Range Rovers, they're always in and out of the shop. Always got a lot of problems, even though they're dope. All right, everybody, let us know in uh, the comments down below what you think about all this. Uh, Would love productive comments. Um, What do you think the true answer is? Uh, Is there any solution? I don't think there is. But anyways, let us know in the comments down below. Sometimes it's good to just talk about this stuff. And again, right, we don't address every single tragic event. I understand uh, Sometimes it's just honestly very sad. So uh, but keep it civil in the comments section, guys. Um, like I said, you know, we're just trying to just, I mean, we can't, we, there's, there's no solution solution. There's like 10 things that would need to change. And, you know, I don't know if they're changing. Until next time with the Hot Pot Boys, we out. Peace. Peace.